loud. Is anyone else here yet? We <laughs> have a couple of people in here right now, and I will take care of the doorbell if you hear it. Just ignore it, and I will make sure to let them in. Okay. okay. I was doing one of our 10-minute commercials. If you need to go over a little bit, it's Sean's time, so I'm sure you could do that. Sounds good. All you. All right. So am I only, oh, I see Carrie. Okay, hi, Carrie. And then I have Kristen on here, yay. Um, so <laughs> I don't think anybody else knew about this, but uh, the, it'll just be the four of us today, I guess. So I'm just gonna shot, show you the screen. Um, ooh, one second. Now, What do I do here um, with this, Susie? So you hit share screen. Right, and now it's showing me. So uh, it should show like whiteboard of, and then. Right. And are so you, like, are you how in How do I get Chrome? to my desk? No, yeah, I just wanna show what's on my desktop. So what are your choices? You see whiteboard. Yeah, oh, okay, I see launch meeting for the Zoom, but that's the, that's the. That's the screen, I guess. That's I Google Chrome. See. Yep, and then you right. just change okay. the tab. And then I can yep. go to it. Okay. All right. I hope you'll take that out of the video then. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, so anyway, so what I was explaining is that I have made a quick guide to Modern Teacher, and um, a lot of people were asking about it. A lot of people know a lot of these things now already, but uh, I made this a few days ago before everybody did. And um, so the first thing that I recommended was that people get the Bitmoji app and also that they, uh, it, there was a lot of struggle at first to see if it was worth buying into. And so I gave some reasons why um, I think Modern Teacher and why doing this works so well with blended learning. So um, there's some information here on the slide about it. One thing that is that it increases engagement significantly. Um, especially doing um, the interactive slideshows. So I really liked that um, part of it so that I can have the, the synchronous and asynchronous have all working at the same time. So I'll be putting up the slideshow at the beginning of class for um, both sides to do together. So as a class, so we'll go through the slides and um, every so many slides, there will be, um, as it says here, a check for understanding. So every few slides after we've discussed a topic, we'll check for the understanding um, by doing a Kahoot game or doing a Google form little mini quiz or um, a, ver a variety of things, Padlet or other things where, so that the students will be engaging with touching so that they're, they're actively involved rather than just being um, a viewer. They'll, they'll need to, um, actually you know have their computer on they can't be laying in bed or something they'll be up they'll be ready to type um, and to be involved and then sometimes they'll do things with groups um, so the two groups can mix um, so let's see um, so then it, I just put in how you start is get the bitmojis um, and what the bitmojis what you can do with them sending reminders encouragement feedback and so forth to um, to the students as well as using them in the slideshows. But um, I thought, and I know you know this, Susie, that it's taken the education world by storm. Bitmojis are insanely popular right now and everybody is making the Bitmoji classrooms. And uh, they are fun and they're cute, a way to personalize things for the students. And um, so now they're making a lot of the Bitmojis do teacher-y type of things. So there's a lot of things in there for us to use. Um, so then I showed an example of my landing page, which is, um, has been changed now to remove um, some of the information because I did have the Zoom codes on before. Um, and we talked about not adding the Zoom codes in, but it does have my classroom codes uh, to Google Classroom and um, all the basic information uh, that they need to reach me, if they have technology issues, if they have, um, if they want to do extra things, so. And then um, that leads them to um, this, which is the Bitmoji Classroom. And then they can link here to the, to the projects that we're doing each day um, or whatever the day's lesson is. Um, and 
then um, and I I'll think, have, sorry, Jeb, but I think you mentioned yesterday that slide you were just on of your classroom. Can you explain again why oh, you created it the way you did? Sure. Um, so I made this Betmoji classroom look exactly like my own art room so that it looked very comfortable and familiar to the kids. So even if they weren't um, in class at the time, if they're working remotely, it feels like they're sort of here. And then just for extra fun, I made, I made each and everything on here be a link. So you can go on to the computer and it links somewhere. You can go on to each poster and it links somewhere. If you click on Starry Night, you'll, it takes you to information about Vincent Van Gogh. Um, there's, there's a camera here, so it takes you to introduction to, to photography and so forth. So, um, so I just did that for fun and we'll probably do that on the first day. But um, I did really like the fact that it looks just like my room. So, um, and then for the agenda each day, um, I put that on the Bitmoji classroom as well. I, you know, I changed the Bitmoji classrooms up here and there. And um, I just used um, the objective, what the mini lesson is, what the activity is, and then what the wrap up is so that we'll do um, the mini lesson together with the two groups. And then they'll do the activity on their own with me checking in with all of them. And then at the end, come back together with um, a little final thing. In this case, it's a Padlet with memes because it's the beginning of school and we're doing some funny things. So, um, so then this is more of a, hmm, the learning plan. Oh no, this is one of the slides I, I missed labeled it. This is one of the slides um, from the agenda as well. Um, and it has some links on the mini lesson um, that has the Zoom meetings about Zoom etiquette and, and making a Google website. So uh, we would go over that part together and then they would work on that on their own. Uh, and then next one. So when they first get to class though, in order for me to have a little bit of time to get ready, get the other class on, in Zoom all settled, get the class in, um, in the building get settled, make sure everybody is here and all of that part, do the attendance. I needed something for them to do for those five or 10 minutes. So I, I decided to do bell ringers. And um, so they'll do a small little art history lesson each day. Um, so I made a slide for each of those. This is actually, not as crowded as this is this part up here is for you at the top but um the slide itself is all of these things and so they would come in they would see the picture of the artist they would um, read the things about it here and then they well they would um, watch a little video and then um and then they would um this is how they would finish it they would answer this question on a padlet so if um they click here i think it will work with my screen doing this you can see that it gives them a Padlet. Um, so they would click on that and then they would go in and answer the question about uh, Jean-Michael, uh, his, um, his career and why do they think it's groundbreaking and so forth. So they would click right on the Padlet and put something up on Padlet with the rest of their peers so they could see what each other is doing. Um, so that's, and I don't know if people, I think everybody knows how to make a word or a picture be a link, um, but um, if you don't, it's really easy to do in slides. You're just going to click the word and uh, make, you just click the word and um, click on this link and it brings it up for you to, um, you can call it what you want for the text and then you can right click and put your link in here. And then it will make that, um, so this goes to his um, Wikipedia page. So you can make it, make it apply and hit apply and then it will make that, uh, that sentence or word or object be a direct link to that thing. That's how I did it with the little camera and all the things in my classroom. It can be an object, photo or, uh, or a word. Um, so this was, this is the bell ringers that would only take them about five or 10 minutes. It's a quick and easy, it's, it's like a four minute video. And, and then they go in and write their little paragraph in Padlet. So, um, ooh, the bell is ringing. Okay. So then, um, uh, 
this is a sample of um, of a class slides that I would show, and they they would go watch this on the PowerPoint. Um, the, there's a link to a video here on the history of pottery. After I do an introduction myself and we talk about this, they watch the video. They have a choice of watching the video or reading the article. And then this is their uh, think about, they would look at these and then answer their opinion on these in a Google Doc in Google Classroom. Uh, and you know, post it in Google Classroom. Um, and then this one, this one's for another, a different class for digital photography. Same thing, they, they would look, link to um, their tutorial uh, here. And then I have um, practice photos that they can use to do practice with Photoshop. And um, I have the standards in here, and this is for what they'll learn for each lesson, what the objective is. But um, the tutorial that they would do would, would click from here and they would, they would go ahead and start. Oh no! This sorry. This one's for Google Classroom, where they're gonna where they're gonna put the work that they finished <laughs> all over the place. Okay. So then, um, if people wanted to know how to make things interactive to make the slides, it's easy to make the slides. I've put here um, a name of um, three companies that will give you free slides that are already pretty and already designed, and then um, you would make your your Google Slides. You put in your information in them, and then you can use a thing called Pear Deck, which sort of ramps up and helps you make the slideshows be more interactive. And there's also another company called Nearpod, um, which also has slideshows that are already pre-made in certain subjects. Um, and then there's, and like I said, every few slides to make keep them interactive and keep the kids engaged, um, it would you do a check for understanding slide. Um, you know, either at the end of each lesson or, or every few slides if it's a longer lesson. And that could be a mini quiz that you do on Google, Google um, Forms or a Padlet or a Kahoot game or an Ed Puzzle or something that allows them to play along with their classmates. Uh, but they could do it individually as well if they um, are absent that day or for whatever reason. And um, then this was how to do the highlighting the word to, to connect the link, but also to connect the YouTube videos. You can, you, you can connect the YouTube video right into your slide. Um, and I, Susie, you did a lesson on that already on how to do it, to put it into a, a certain place. So I know people can look at that and see it. Uh, if they did the check what you know, then they can, um, you, I put in a slide like this, so you could put the code right here and they could connect right away to the game. Um, and I think that's it. I just wanted to go back to the slide at the beginning. So it, the reason that it's useful is that it's a, a new method in design um, to deliver content. I think it's good because you can, um, you can go back to remote learning 100% on the fly if you have to, but um, it, it's good for doing blended learning too. And then uh, it increases the student engagement because it's a high touch activity. They have to have their hands on and be involved. And they don't know when the next slide is coming that will be one of the interactive games or, or something like that. So um, it makes it more like a game. It's more appealing to the students. It's more visually appealing, I think, to do the slides instead of the, um, instead of a boring, you know, typed list of things to do. It just looks more beautiful that way. Um, and it's personalized this way. They can um, do their own pace, learning at their own pace. And it gives them a little bit more choice too. I do try to give them, like I said, with the article or the video, they could choose one or the other um, so that they have more student choice in it, um, which gives them more ownership of their learning. Um, and the one thing is, it is it takes a little time to make all of these learning plans, but they will be able to be used again and again once we get this all all settled down. So um, I, I think that it, they'll be here to stay even after COVID is over. We'll, we'll still be able to use these lesson plans all the time, the learning plans. So that's all. That's awesome, Deb. I think Thank that you. that is super helpful for <laughs> others that are here. 
Um, I know that some people didn't get the beginning of it, but I did record it and we'll be posting that up so you can see Deb go through all of her stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know if um, you noticed or not, Deb, before you stop sharing your screen, I did a video on it, but um, the, if you click on your little Bitmoji icon where you would normally insert a Bitmoji, so at the top where your extensions are, oh, mm -hmm. yes, and you click on that, you can type any word in the search box. So yes. like type Mrs. Trianus which you know there's no way that that's going to be in there. Right. But what it, puts it will it do, on the Bitmojis you have. Right. <laughs> it will put it on some Bitmoji. So you can use any words that you want to. So if you're doing a lesson on color or you're doing a lesson on whatever, you can use the actual words and it will assign it. You might not want to insert the beer can, but um, it will be <laughs> hopefully an appropriate choice for you to pick from. But also, okay. if you drag it right from here onto your slides, it will take the white background off for you. Yes. Too, yes, if you awesome. if you take if you use this instead of copying and pasting them on, uh, yeah. like these are, which is yep. helpful also. But yes, I love that you can you can use uh, you can make any Customize words that you it. want there. Yes, to custom. Yeah. That's so cool. Very cute. All right, Deb, you did Thank an awesome you. job. I'm so glad that you stepped up and offered to share. Oh, and I no know problem. that no matter what grade level anyone's teaching, that that would be useful. So let me hit right. stop record. You're yeah. awesome. Thank you. You're welcome.